Hello. So what we're doing now is mixing the thin set, which is what holds the the more the ceramic tile to the hardy board in this case. And this is a a thin set mortar by Versa Bond. This is from Home Depot. The bu the buckets from Home Depot, but you can use Lowe's or whoever. And uh, there's calculations, there's destruct instructions, destruction uh, on how to do it, and it tells you coverage if you have different size. Uh, tired, but anyway, if you have different size grooves, it'll tell you how far the, a bag will go. In this case, we got a really small bathroom, not super small, but small. And so now, what I do is I put water in first, and uh, not a leaf. And I'm not outside where I don't make too much of a mess. I won't want to do it inside the customer's house and mess up their house and track it all up. But what we're going to do is pour, instead of just putting this in and then trying to pour water over top of it, put the water in first because uh, we have a lot less trouble cleaning it out. Because a lot of times the bottom, even though you pour water in the top, the bottom ends up getting a lot less water and it ends up having powder at the bottom. and hard to mix because it gets real liquid at the top so our goal is to pour this in and me guessing uh, mixing let it drink a little bit mixing what I'm trying to get is some kind of consistency between peanut butter and soup soup is too much peanut butter is a little on the thick side you want it to kind of slide off peanut butter would stick to a knife or something so here's here we go. If it's a little heavy for the average person to lift this bag up, you could do it by cupfuls, and you could do it by, with a drywall finishing pan. I was worried they might have put too much water in here. I have electric drills, this battery powered drill. I've got multiple of, so I don't mind. I put it on one so it's not fast as strong. A lot of times I'll just bump it instead of trying to go full blast because it's going to really work hard. We got to get all those lumps out of there. It's going to mix pretty good, looks like. You need to make sure you get all the bottom. Mix this as well. Give a little lump to dried up spot. And now if you're the poor grill's going, oh my god! So it's starting to smell like burning plastic. But I believe it's going to make it. I'd recommend a heavier grill. Electric grill. Because I have burned these up. I just did a set of them. That's pretty good. We got a little bit of lumps, but that's still pretty good. And guess what? The mix is pretty good. You see how that's dripping off? Still thick. Now you say, well, how did you come up with that? I'll tell you, honestly, it's all instinct. Sometimes I have to add water, and then I add too much water, and I have to... Uh, but the more you do it, the less mistakes you make. Uh, I'm on my third marriage. other but neither one of us needed each other we just liked each other you know that's probably how you should do it so anyway when you mix a lot you kind of know hey I'll put this much in and it will mix well
So it is uh, working together. And now the federal government calls it a uh, mitigation. So we are working together here and uh, mitigating. I like that stupid term. We gotta come up with something mysterious. But anyway, cooperation is what you want. And so we're now we're gonna take this little six inch finishing knife instead of trying to uh, rely on dumping it all out and leaving chunks of it in the bucket. Uh, I can take that finishing knife and, and pull it out because this is the same kind of size bucket that you use for drywall mud and guess what you use that to get it out or at least I do you can maybe have some magical powers that I don't have but this is how I do it okay here we go okay here's our uh, chalk line that we popped so I'm gonna start on this side of it and then work back and forth until we come to the last part we'll work to the middle uh, where the door is come on around here clay this is the size that we're using and the grooves if you have like big old gloops like that you got to pull it down i don't really care right there because i'm working over here first So everything has and you see where those dot those dotted areas are that's not enough you gotta put more on see that see those gaps right like right there that's not enough you got to put more there so that's what I'm doing I'm gonna fill all this area and then I'm gonna work from this line that way because I can probably reach that and uh, Go all the way across, have a lot of cuts, and we'll take you with us so you can do it yourself, or at least you know how it's supposed to be done. That's what I provide is that knowledge either to do it yourself or know what how it's supposed to be done so you can have somebody doing it right for you. What we decided was instead of doing halves when we stagger these, we're going to do it in thirds. So a third would be about six and three eighths out of. 19 and a half, well, we better go with six, six, 19 and a half. So 19 and a half divided by three would be six, and then inch and a half divided by, that'd be six and a half inches. So we're gonna do, let's cut this at six and a half all the way across. That way I'll have the first one six and a half inches back from here and then I'll have this piece so I'll put it over there so we'll be, that'll be our stagger and we can do that over and over and over again. Now we're going to go cut it. Alright, one of the things you need to remember if you want your saw to last or your saw blade, make sure there's always water running on this thing. And man, why don't you come around this side? This particular one, I have one that you pull. It's a longer platform. I have another that you come down. I have another that's a table. This particular one has a table that slides through. So we can cut some pretty good size things. What I'm gonna do? Put it up tight on that, and then line it up. Now, I'm going to crank it up, and we're going to see water here, and then I'm going to start Now, if you notice, you see that motor is letting you know, hey, don't push me too hard because I'm going to bog down. You don't want to do that. And if you also notice, it's trying to pick up when you try to go too fast. Uh, a lot of times when you get near edges, if you're going too fast for it, it'll end up breaking pieces. Uh, you'll run into that. And you don't have to have this nice of a saw, although there's nicer than this. 
you can have this little table saw. I did big, big jobs with a little bitty $50 saws you can get at Harbor Freight. That you push it through the little tiny blade. You can do it with the, the brake ones, uh, which I haven't done very many of those. I've used them, but I don't do big jobs with them. You can't. But here's what we did. And now we're going to go in there and Clay's going to take over cutting and we're going to be uh, giving him measurements. I'll probably mark the material and he'll Drew will bring it out to him and then he'll cut it and then Drew will bring it back and I'll be in there on my knees the whole day long. No, it'll be a few hours and I'll show you what we're doing. Okay, if you look down here, we've already lined these up, put spacers in between them, kept them on that chalk line that we set. And uh, now we're staggering those pieces up. We saw us cut. And we stagger the first one like that. Don't want to be too far away and then pull over because you end up squeezing up that grout up in there. What we're doing now is putting it the spacers like so. Getting it over. Now I make little rubber hammers for that. You can do that too. And then I get a full piece. I'll put the spacers in everywhere. Each side. And maybe two on the end. Oops. Okay, then we have that other third. We go, so we're gonna start. Uh, I gotta now if you remember, we don't have to be that close because we're gonna put trim on top of that. But in this case, I'm going to because it's not a big deal for me to do. Now, this is kind of a complex cut right here, All right? So, I don't want to be terribly close. Now, remember, we're gonna get trim three quarters to five eighths of an inch of trim, and uh, so I got my piece here. And I measure to it. Remember, we're going to have a spacer too. Three sixteenths. Hmm. So I got to have room. So I can do four and a half over. And I got to have a spacer here. Uh, so I can go an inch and a half there. So basically, I'm allowing a half inch or a quarter inch on this side, quarter inch on this side. It'll be a little closer there. So, inch and a half. I'm doing this like drywall. I know a lot of people can't, but this is just years and years of doing it. Okay. Then the other side. Go like that, it's 12 and a quarter. That's tight. Do 12 and a quarter, quarter inch. So I do 12 and 3 eighths. Right. This is going to be the tricky part here. Wish I brought my little table saw for it. But we got to cut this section out. So We're gonna cut here and here, and I'll have to help you with that. And uh, I'll see if we can figure out a way to cut this. 
Also, we have one right here, which would be like an 11 inch piece. You can use a speed square, things like that. That's your waist. Um, if we could cut that down into one of those pieces there, but that's okay. We'll just keep that out there for now. They'll end up being places. So, we got these two pieces to cut, and I'll go out there with them. But we'll get a rhythm going and we'll show you what's going on. Okay, the way I did this was I, uh, of course, cut it here and here. But what I first did was cut this area by taking the roller pan, pan off of that thing and then lifting it up into the blade and cutting it off. But if you notice, I didn't cut through, so we have lines out here or here. So I have to I have these nibblers that you can buy where they sell ceramic tile tools. And you can get into that corner, watch me break the top, and nibble that out. So now we got what we can put this in. Nope, we got to cut depth this way now. I didn't even think about that. Here I am, supposed to be knowing what I'm doing. Okay, so four and a quarter. Four and a quarter, like Drew said. Here's a pencil. Gets cut off, and they also asked me to mark a six and a half inch piece. But how about this? We'll do it like we did last time. We'll mark six and a half this way, and we'll want, you can cut on that side, we'll want this piece and then that piece. Okay, two pieces for Drew to take the clay, and they're going to cut them. Hello friends, uh, today we're after the grout and you can pan through there, the tile's all been set, we're putting the grout in, I make sure the customer was happy with the color, and I'm using a sanded grout, and I'm using a finishing knife to push it in, that way I'm just real familiar with finishing knife after all the years of drywall finishing. And we mixed it with a battery powered drill and uh, a beater, which I'll show you here shortly how that works. And I'm forcing that grout in there. Of course, we've taken all the spacers out. We didn't do it. The kids that live here had a lot of fun doing it. And I had suggested that would be something fun for the kids to do. And uh, so, We'll let that set a little bit and we will keep on keeping on and uh, we'll come back here and start wiping it out. Wiping it down, we'll show you how to do that. Okay, in case you're wondering, go ahead and keep it. This is how we mix. Use a beater like this, a battery powered drill. Don't want to mix a whole, whole lot because uh, you got to get it down in 45 minutes. That's about when it starts getting... Uh, stiffer to, to wipe it all down. So that's about the mixture that we want. Maybe a little thicker, but that'll work. And then we're going inside and put it in. When we first start off, we do with the sponge. If you watch how Drew's doing this, uh, we're getting the main part of it off. And uh, then we come back with a towel. Here we're back here, we're using towels. Clay's tracking it up, but this team is getting better and better at it. And you get to pull it down with a towel. Believe it or not, that works better than sponge. And it's, it could be a if you buy a brand new towel. I go to thrift stores and pick them up and then use them again and again so they can't be used. But towel speeds it up and does a better job. Now, after that towel, 
does its job. It'll leave a fine dust. Oh, never mind. Wait, we need to clean that up so that looks better. Uh, it'll leave a fine dust, and then we'll come back with that towel again and wipe that dust down. And uh, we'll get it all cleaned up nice and pretty. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is I simply let this dry for about an hour or so. We're going to take a towel and knock the dust off of all this. Tomorrow we'll come back and we'll seal it, maybe. But today we're going to cover it with paper, every bit of it. And then we're going to paint the ceiling. And we're going to get the walls ready, maybe paint the walls today. Well, there'll be some texture spray and there's some holes to fill in. Uh, screws to take care of. So we'll do all that. We're using a uh, five minute mud, so I can't really do a lot of face to face. Is it dry? Anytime you put water on it, it within five minutes, and I'm pretty far in. So, all these areas we dug out loose, drywall, filled in. Smashed in screws and holes. We're now filling it with five minute mud, which means it will be dry pretty quick. Then we'll really Drew's, Drew's falling along behind me and he's uh, feathering out the edges. So then I'll come back and I'll spray texture on all this that needs it. And if you're not a good finisher, you don't have to use five minute mud. I would recommend you use something like 15 to 45 minute mud. If you want it faster, all you gotta do is use hot water to mix, and it's twice as fast. So don't, unless you're really confident about your abilities, don't uh, use, you need a hammer. Five minutes. 